means. Just okay, recording. We are All right, cool. Sweet. Okay. Three. <laughs> I think this is 107. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode, I think, 107 of the security podcast on the In30 network. We're here. Last minute news. This happened. This is breaking. So the official good use of breaking news. The Department of Justice is telling Apple that they must find a way or to create new software that allows the government to break into people's iPhones, iDevices, and other software in trying to get into the San Bernardino's uh, shooter's phone. So oh, that was horrible. I'm going to start again. I'm going to start again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're, today's not that good. Okay, stop. Ready, Tom? Okay. I'm good. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 107. We were going to talk about my network, and we still may, but Apple today was asked by the FBI and the Department of Justice to, to find a way, either by creating new software or to brute force, to find a way to get into the San Bernardino shooting cell phone. They have information. They want to look at it, and Apple is fighting back. So we have Tom here to explain in way more detail than I will ever do on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Howdy, everyone. So what's up? Apple has uh, really thrown down the gauntlet when it comes to the government, uh, and no one could be happier. Now, uh, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know I am not a huge fan of Apple. I'm definitely on the open source, not walled garden side of things, but but Apple has got a bunch of weight behind them. Uh, in security matters, they've been starting to take things more seriously. The products are getting safer each day and each uh, patch cycle. And um, Apple has now issued a challenge to the government, and they said, uh, yeah, no, we're not going to play that game. Encryption is important. We're not going to help you brute force a pin. Uh, and we are going to fight this in court, uh, to which uh, the EFF has said, hey, guys, listen, uh, we know you're Apple. We know you have more money than God, but if you want our help, we will help you with this because this is an important thing, uh, to which uh, Apple has you know, replied, thank you. We appreciate it. So Apple is definitely sticking it to the man, and uh, we're, we're going to bring you a few choice quotes, but... Let's let's give some background on this. So, so this is a this is the case that the FBI has always wanted. Uh, the FBI doesn't necessarily want the evidence on the phone. They don't care about the phone. They don't care what's on the phone. What they want is they want a legal precedent. They want to be able to go to Apple and say, well, because a judge ruled this way, you do have to help us crack all these other phones because national security. They don't actually care about the evidence. They don't care about the terrorism. They don't care about what's on the device. What they care about is a judge saying, Apple, you have to do this. Uh, because if they have the legal precedent, they can go back for any reason. They can say, oh, uh, protect the children. It's child pornography or uh, stop human trafficking or we just feel like it because it's a Tuesday. Uh, so you have to go ahead and unlock these phones because a judge has said so. Apple sees the slippery slope. They see what they're trying to do and they're going to fight it with everything they can. It sounds like I mean. Look, you have the word terrorism in there. We, nobody here wants terrorism. I am not pro-terrorism. I don't think Tom is pro-terrorism or pro-child pornography or pro any type of crime or criminal. But we are pro-privacy. And with the good comes the bad. And if you're going to tell people that they're secure only unless the government says, well, we want to know what you're doing today because Tuesday, Tuesdays matter and Wednesdays matter and Thursdays matter – you're, you're not going to get anywhere. You might as well just be an open book, which some people apparently are saying it's okay as long as it's not me. But once it's me, I have a problem with it. And here, here Apple is saying, look, we are, we, are, we are the largest manufacturer of phones. We keep a huge amount of data. And you know what? We don't want to be the arbiter of what's right and what's wrong. So we're going to let people, we're going to just say no to breaking encryption and they're going to try and here we go with some real legal muscle. And unfortunately, this may end up, like you said, at the Supreme Court level where somebody's going to have to make a decision. And maybe this is the case that will do it rather than some other random case. 
<laughs> right, right. And uh, luckily, uh, this has happened to Apple and uh, not to another smaller company. Um, you see, if, if this were to happen to any other smaller company, uh, let's let's say – I, I don't want to use Google as an example, but if someone went up to Samsung and they said, hey, um, Samsung, go ahead and let us attack your phones. Let us brute force your phones. Let us get through the pin code on your all, all of your devices. Samsung doesn't really have enough money, uh, and they don't really have the guts to fight this kind of case. Um, Apple, on the other hand, has literally got more money than any entity on Earth. I think They're $250 the billion dollars cash. Yeah, just sitting around, just there, because they can. Um, Apple has the money, they have the time, and they have the legal dream team to fight this. Uh, Apple is going to give the government a run for their money, and <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, Legally, how this will shake out, I don't know. It really depends on the judge. Uh, this is not going to be an easy thing. This isn't going to be a, oh, we're just going to go to court one day and settle it in a couple days and it'll be fine. No, this, this is going to be most likely an appeal process, appeal after appeal after appeal, coming from both sides. Uh, if the government loses this case, you can be guaranteed that they're going to appeal it. Uh, this I can see this going all the way to the Supreme Court, which... Uh, you know, depending on what the new justice we get in there, um, could be an easy battle or a hard battle. Um, uh, Roberts tends to be kind of a wild card as far as what if he's feeling liberal or conservative that day. Um, but uh, the the other judges, um, you know, it, it was pretty split down the middle. I would say. Well, was, the question is, fairly is fair court. I asked this on. I asked this to some people on Twitter today. W name a presidential candidate right now who is pro encryption. We lost Rand Paul about a few weeks ago, but I think everyone is everyone is definitely for we we want to stop terrorism, so we need that information, and we're trying to figure out who what's their stance on encryption because that's going to come out. I mean, whether it's to, uh, tonight at some uh, whatever debate debate number umpteen over here or next week or on the national scale encryption should be a hot topic and and hopefully they don't say we will, well we just want to catch terrorism this is only for the terrorists you want the people to throw those hard hitting questions of i'm not a terrorist i have not but i don't, don't want you just rifling through my stuff because because it's or just a random day or you just feel like it so hopefully the supreme court takes it up and and says and makes a ruling obviously pro pro encryption. Now I, I don't want to get full political on on security in thirty, uh, but uh, Hillary did tip her hand, um, and and she is definitely on the against encryption side of the fence today, which is interesting uh, because if you go back in her personal political timeline, uh, she was uh, was quoted in saying that uh, when when you know, we're trying to lock down export laws to keep encryption from leaving the country, uh, she was trying to say, hey, um, we we have to allow encryption because. It allows people to overthrow their bad governments, allows them to talk uh, with secrecy and privacy. It is, uh, you know, uh, an, a representation of the First Amendment for these countries that don't have one. Uh, and I, I do believe that Hillary knows a vague idea of what encryption is. I don't think she understands the nuances of it. Like, if you just outlaw it, it goes away because it doesn't. Spoiler alert. Um, well, if you feel the it, burn, if you feel yeah. the burn... He is he. Uh, I just read this, and and it was a Yahoo source, so I'm not going to go with there. You're you're correct with Hillary. She came out against encryption, but at least Bernie has not been pro nor against, but he's more pro. He's saying that we do have a right to privacy. So so there you go. And the all the Republicans are let's uh, let's just burn encryption. Nobody cares. We want to stop ISIS. Therefore, do whatever it takes. Right. So so let's let's go to Apple. Um, Apple has got a top level link, which is crazy, crazy for Apple, uh, because, I mean, it's it's their glorious website. Right. It is it is the pinnacle of design. It is perfect in all ways. And, it you know, <laughs> nothing shall ever sully it. 
and they've got apple.com slash customer dash letter. Um, this is absolutely huge. Uh, Tim Cook, um, and I'm sure a bunch of other people wrote this message. Uh, and, you know, Tim Cook has been very, very vocal on encryption, very vocal on privacy, and uh, very, very vocal on stopping government intrusion into people's lives, which is really cool. Uh, he goes through and he steps through the need for encryption, how it's protecting us from hackers, from criminals, from you know, people who are trying to sell your phone and get your data or other things. Um, and then he goes into you know the, the San Bernardino case and the whole mess surrounding it. Basically, what the FBI has asked Apple to do is they said, hey, look, look, we're not asking for a back door. We're asking for you to create a one-time firmware that you will update this particular phone to, and you can even do it inside of Apple headquarters. We don't have to have the firmware, but you have to create a firmware, load it on the phone inside of Apple headquarters that will allow us to brute force it or give us a, a technical feasible way to brute force the phone without wiping it and without having the timeout issues. Because right now, as you try to log into an iPhone, if you keep getting stuff wrong, it says, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are not logging in right now. You've got to wait one minute. And then the timer increases. And it goes, ah, no, 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 too much, too much. Five minutes. And then eventually by the 10th time and after that, you get to the point where it's an hour between pin codes. That effectively destroys any type of brute force attack on an iPhone. Um, now, it's important to note that I believe that setting when you set a pin code is by default. I do not believe the lock setting or the uh, the erase after 10 try setting is default, although you can turn it on. But the FBI doesn't want that to happen either because then everything goes away. Um, so what they want Apple to do is to create a firmware that will essentially keep that from happening. You know, remove the lockouts, remove the timeouts, uh, remove the counters, give them some way to brute force the phone. They're saying, oh, it's not a back door. It just is opening up your phone to brute forcing, which, frankly, it's a back door. There's no difference. Um, allowing something to be brute forced um, and you know having uh, an actual back door have technical differences, but it's it's the same thing. Um, have they said whether this the one time piece of software will like if it gets on this this specific phone, will the FBI have access to it or only Apple has access to it? Uh, the FBI has said that only Apple will have access to this. Um, because it sounds like it's a, look well, from what you're describing, Apple find a way to get us this information. Which it, let's say Apple can do. Let, let, they can do it. They they make this and they hand the phone back to the FBI. I don't trust the FBI not to reverse engineer it and say here NSA here CIA. I want you to take this and I want you to do this and then we're gonna put that in our fake metasploit toolkit. So anytime law enforcement gets a phone, they can just load this on. They'll have like a Mac in the police car and they'll be able just to pull it off. But if Apple well, controls it's... all of it, they won't be able to. I, I think I think that's them, you know, trying to pull their card and say, oh, no, no, really, it's it's totally Apple's. Yeah. But, you know, we've we've seen what happens when law enforcement gets a batch of iPhones they want to unlock. They throw them in a box, they ship them to Apple, and they say, ah, go have fun, nerds. Um, and Apple spends a bunch of time and money trying to unlock these things. That's what's happened so far until Apple said, dudes, no more, no more, go away. We're not unlocking these anymore. And that's why it's in court. Um, and Apple has taken software and now hardware steps to keep that from happening. Um, cause we, we know that once this happens, once the FBI, and every law enforcement agency is going to ship their, their locked phones to Apple and say, Hey guys, can you unlock these for us? By the way, there's a legal precedent that says you have to. Um, and, and Tim Cook and Apple do not want that to happen under any circumstances. A, because it costs a lot of money, right? You've got to put time and people and energy into not only creating the software, but unlocking these things, brute forcing them. It's just, it's, it's bad. Imagine it, it the one Apple, more thing at the Apple yeah. Kino. One more thing, guys. We got one more thing. Now, iOS 10 with FBI surveillance 
intrusion mechanisms. Well, they were saying that the Chinese government, uh, CNN, and we, and I'm not saying that CNN is accurate in this case because we are smarter than them when it comes to technology. They're saying, well, if the FBI can enforce it, what about China? What about China saying, if you want access to our billion people, you better do it. And remember, this happened to RIM out in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, where they said, BBM, we don't want terrorism. If you want to be here, you can go. Now, here's the thing. I mean, when you have and I like $206 billion as their recent uh, reportings, when you have $206 billion, you could probably take that money and say, you know what? We're taking our ball and going home. But then again, they have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to say, oh, we're going to leave China. The shareholders won't like that. And remember, shareholders want money. They don't necessarily care about morality. So here you go, whether you like this idea or not. Tim Cook is drawing the line and saying, this is safe and we're going there. What I would really like, remember now, all the, the government, and all the, the Congress people had Blackberries. Now they all move to iPhones. I want them to say, you know what, federal government, we're just going to pull the, we're going to pull the iPhones. We are not going to let you, you can't have them. And now we'll see what happens because uh, <laughs> we're closed source. We're not Android. We're not Windows phone. We're an iPhone. You can't do it unless you have our signed certificate. So you can't reverse engineer our code. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really. So so what what prevents uh, someone like the FBI or another entity from just crafting their own updates and throwing it on the phone? Uh, well, Apple has built their platform securely. They built it the right way, uh, at least in this regard. Right. I, I'm not an Apple fanboy. I don't necessarily like everything Apple does. But when it comes to security in this regard, they've done a lot of right things. Um, they have signed firmware updates. So what an iPhone does, it gets an update package when it goes into update mode, either you know through hooking it up to, to USB um, or, or lightning port um, and uh, or over the air updates. It gets a package, right? And it goes, ah, cool, updates. But then it, it reads the digital cryptographic signature of which only the private key of Apple Incorporated could possibly make. And if that digital signature does not match something that Apple has made, it goes, ah, this is trash or it must be corrupted or it's, you know, fake and vulnerable and it throws it out. Now, if it does have a signature from Apple, it'll take the package, open it up and start upgrading stuff. Um, so the FBI can't just willy nilly create a software package. It has to be Apple. Right. Um, it does prevent people. And I apologize for my alarm going off. Uh, it does prevent people from creating their own spins of iOS or their own distributions of iOS. Uh, it also prevents the government from creating their own spins or distributions of iOS, um, which is. I don't, here's the perfect segue. I don't think I don't think uh, the president wants an error 53 on his phone. No. So <laughs> you, you want to take the error 53? Oh, uh, no, I, I was going to leave that alone right now because it's not really a security issue. It's just it's a nasty, nasty bug, um, which the Internet has been exploiting to the fullest extent. Uh, so I had to throw the it FBI, in, there, but it was yeah. because you can't even replace the fingerprint sensor without Apple complaining and booking your phone. Right. Uh, which actually leads me to why this is happening on a 5C and can't happen elsewhere right now. Uh, so the 5C does not have Touch ID, right? Which everyone goes, ah, who cares? Anyone in security goes, ah, it's a fingerprint sensor, right? Who cares about a fingerprint sensor? Well, you know, no one, especially not if you're, you know, in a courtroom and someone says, give me your fingerprint, because then your fingerprint sensor becomes the thing that gets you owned. Uh, but what Touch ID comes with is it comes with a secure enclave, which is cryptographic hardware on the device storing key material. What that means is that all the brute force protections, the counters decrementing every time you get a, a wrong pin code on your iPhone, that's not in software. That's in hardware. That's in silicon on the board. Uh, so regardless of what firmware you have attached to the phone, every time you put in the pin, it has to look up the key material in the secure enclave, which triggers a decrement. So anything that has Touch ID, this will not work. This sort of brute force attack will not work because it will still decrement uh, and the secure enclave will, if you have the option turned on, 
uh, you know, it can shred the key material uh, or it can, you know, completely lock out your iPhone. So the timeout value is still there, but this time it's baked into hardware. It's going to be a lot harder to mess with, right? They've got to actually take the cap off of the microchip and try to JTAG the thing and read off the key material. And that's, no one wants that, right? It's hard for professionals to do that, let alone the FBI. Well, I had a question before. Somebody asked me, how does this relate to iMessage? And I don't know if we're ready to go there yet. And my response is, and I said I may be wrong, I was going to ask you tonight, is Apple holds the iMessage keys. So they could they get the two, could they could they give the government the iMessage communications? I think they can. Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely they can. So, but if there was anything else, any files on phone or anything else, that they have no access to. Um as of yet, no. I mean, if now they they, they yeah. could they could theoretically the secure enclave does not protect you from everything, right? Apple is still controlling the software stack. You do not. So if Apple wanted to push a firmware update to a specific iPhone that let's say takes all of the data and uploads it to Apple uh, in an iCloud backup in an unencrypted form, and then they hand the backup to law enforcement, they could do that too because the backups are going to have everything. So it doesn't mean that if you have anything greater than a 5C, you are completely protected from law enforcement. That's not what I'm saying. Apple still controls this device. They still control the keys. You do not. You know, At best, you're leasing the software from them. Um, what it is saying is that it does make it harder for the FBI to get stuff, right? It makes it harder for them to request things of Apple. It's... I mean, I'm sure the first thing they did was ask for the iMessage details. I'm just trying to figure out what else is, not that I really care, but what else is on the phone that they would have other than the iMessage? I mean, presumably they can go after, they can find the email and compel each individual entity, right? So they can say, hey, you're using Gmail. We want we want any information on this. And Google will, of course, uh, well, not of course, but will will get a FISA letter and they will comply and, and everyone else. So if they were using Telegram, I mean, well, the NSA can just break Telegram. That's not that hard. But the other, the same thing with the other things, Facebook or Instagram, I'm sure Facebook would turn that over in a FISA court ruling. So. And, uh, and please hold because uh, we're, we're getting some breaking news. So let me do a little bit of research on this. So, well, again, and while we're waiting on, the, while we're waiting on you to look at that, the, the it's it's a hard topic because because they're pulling and I think we said this at the top of the show they're pulling on people's heartstrings to say well this is terrorism this doesn't you don't want this to happen to you and we don't want this to happen to anybody else so just we're, we're not going to abuse it and the answer is we can't we can't prove that I mean we've seen law enforcement take all this information on a petty you get pulled over and the first thing they want is your cell phone. Well, they want to make sure you weren't texting while driving. I got that. But they pulled you over because you had a broken headlight, not because you were driving erratically. And here they are trying to grab all this information that all they could have done is gone to Verizon or gone to the carrier and said, give this to me, which then leads us into all they had to do was go to the carrier and get all this information. And so here you are doing all of this to try and protect yourself when somebody else is selling you out. So it's... Even though you may not have anything to hide, why do you just want people just rifling through your stuff just because? Because one day you may want something. You may not want that surprise of whatever it is to come back and bite you. Or you may have something you don't want to relive. And here it comes again. You always hear stories of how Target and most recently Fitbit and all these watch apps know that you're pregnant before you're pregnant because they're getting data. I mean, not that that's a real correlation, but here you are saying, hey, well, they got this information before. Now, imagine if we turn that data, that machine crunching onto all your data because we happen to siphon it through. So do we have anything yet, Tom? No, no. And I apologize because it seems we're being trolled. Uh, so no, no. Um, but this, uh, that actually brings up a good point. So what if, what if Apple says, okay, government, we'll unlock it just this one time. It prevents going to court. 
it pre- well, I mean, it's already in court, but it prevents setting a legal precedent, right? And instead of becoming de facto law by having a legal precedent, it uh, it instead becomes essentially a settlement, right? But that settlement gets hidden. We will never know yes. the details of that settlement. Right. Which it, it avoids setting a legal precedent, which is good for everyone, including Apple. It's... It's, it, w- it would be interesting. It would be an interesting ploy. Apple, but, but let's let's say um, you know your iPhone in regards to iMessage and protecting stuff on the phone. You know, let's say you're using Signal or another protected messaging platform like Signal. Uh, if you're using Signal and you're sending messages back and forth, uh, and it's pre-internet encryption, it's locked out on the device, then. No, Apple can't hand that over to the FBI, or at least it's harder for them to do that. Um, you know, but if the encryption keys are stored in the iCloud backup, no, they've got that too. So you have to turn off iCloud. Right. Basically, if if you're giving Apple anything, they can hand it over is essentially how it works. Um, but the, I, I think the bigger thing here is that, you know, Apple is fighting this, they need to fight this, and I, I think they're gonna they're gonna find a way through. Well, this is good. And by the way, it, this is not just Apple fi- f- uh, fighting it. The EFF has come to Apple's aid, which I don't know if that means anything. I mean, Apple could just buy the EFF, but uh, you have the EFF coming to to the aid. I'm hoping that Facebook and Google and Microsoft all come <clears throat> out in some way or form and say. We all have devices. We, we all have customers' data, and you can't do this. No matter how you want to do it, we have to protect our users because if we lose that trust, we will no longer be in business. And you don't want Google shutting down because people have left due to privacy concerns. Apple doesn't want that. Facebook Facebook definitely doesn't want that. And all of them have stood up in the past, but it's hard to stand up when you're being compelled to do something. Right, right. Now, now there is, I did say a, uh, a really good point, uh, actually on Twitter today, um, which was, you know, there's, there's a reason the, the phone in this case is an iPhone, right? Not an Android phone, not a Samsung phone, not an LG phone, not Nokia, not Windows phone, right? Because A, you know, Microsoft is in the government's back pocket and they'll really do anything if the government even implies that they want something. Hey, guys, do you think you could unlock? Oh, yeah, no, totally. Here, it's a great backdoor for Windows Phone. The door so we could carry in the groceries for us. Thanks. Um, but, you know, with, with Android, with a really open platform that anyone can create an Android operating system, anyone can slap Android on a phone and sell it, it's now up to the OEMs creating most of the architecture, right? Creating most of the operating systems. But then the government could go to the carriers, which also have their fingers in those pies, right? Because every carrier has got their crappy carrier apps that they're they're bundling in with root access. They could just say, oh, hey, Verizon, could you make sure you backdoor this for us? And then it's done. Or, you know, hey, LG or hey, HTC, we saw that your stock price isn't doing so well. Do you want a cash infusion from the government Sure, we'll be happy to help, but you need to include this little piece of software in your operating systems, right? Um, Apple has got not only the guts to say no, but they have the ecosystem to say no. Google can't protect Android when it's this open. I love Android to death. I love running my my own custom ROM. It's great, but uh, it's absolutely impossible to protect everyone when anyone can make a fork of it, right? It's... It's the great problem of open source, uh, one that I think we can work through, but Apple is definitely in a better position to protect people right now. The one, well, there's two things. First off, if you're if you're on the Android side, if you're not, again, the custom ROMs, you have to trust the custom ROM manufacturers. But if you're using a Nexus device, so we keep on saying with the Nexus device because Google controls everything about it and they've shown that they're willing to do that. Not Samsung, not LG, not Motorola, not anybody, but Google controls it. So you're if you're on a Nexus device, you're hoping that Google also stands up to this, which all indications say that they generally would. I mean, they haven't come out yet, but that's 
if if you care about security, obviously stick to the Nexus devices. It's uh, it's the one thing. Yeah. Oh, the one thing we I don't know if we mentioned here at all is that the San Bernardino bombings. The one the one person was a U.S. citizen, which is very key to this. Not a foreign national, but a United States citizen, and who now we're trying to to extract all the information and they're saying, well, we just want to keep tabs on non U S citizens. Here you go. People going after U S citizens. Yeah, this, this is going to be an interesting legal shakedown. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is that Apple is doing the right thing, right? They are fighting the right people. Um, they, they're fighting the good fight and it's going to benefit everyone. But, um, you know, the, the FBI isn't interested in the evidence, right? They're not interested in stopping terrorism. They're not interested in what's on this phone. They're interested in setting a legal precedent that they can go back to everyone with and say, including Apple, and say, hey, unlock this phone because a judge told you to. It's This one time in the past. Oh, and by the way, we should mention this, and I, I know we're going to run a little bit over, uh, but the FBI is relying on a, uh, a law, the All Writs Act, which um, happens to be writ written in uh, 1789. Uh, does anyone else see a problem with this? They're using a law from 1789 to uh, justify unlocking a pocket supercomputer that talks to space. Yes, there's a problem with this. Um, but it's not the first time, and it's certainly not the last time, that our government agencies are going to rely on stupid, antiquated laws from colonial times to justify them being absolute idiots when it comes to people's personal I mean, privacy. I don't want to be a complete, complete, utter buzzkill, but the most important law was written in uh, August 1781. <laughs> You know, okay, that's that is accurate. I mean, that is I, absolutely I, no, accurate. The point is, the point is, is there that they're relying on a law like, like what's the hacking law that you keep citing to me? It's laws that were written way uh, that didn't has not been updated since technology took over, and they're trying right. to fit something in that said that 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 makes you a traitor, or acts of treason, or a terrorist, or a hacker when people don't understand what's at stake here, right? So it'll be interesting, and we will definitely cover this more as it comes out. Uh, I think next week we're going to talk about your networking, uh, troubles and all. And uh, from there, I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, we ran a little longer, It's uh, but I think it was good. I think there'll be a lot of discussion from this. And I already know, so if you're listening live, Security Now tomorrow. So we talked about Security Now at the top of the show. It's a It's – it's our pot. It's Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte talking about the security topic. This is probably their topic tomorrow. They're going to go way more in depth, way more detailed. What secure enclave means down to the bit level and everything else. So if you really, if you have two and a half hours to, to listen to it, they're going to give you more information than you ever need to know. But it would still probably be a good listen if you're if you're listening to the recording. This already came out, and you can go and check that out then. Anyway, I'll see it. Well, until next week, everyone, we'll see you later. Bye. See you, everyone. Uh, and pause. Okay. And I think for our live.